Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about forming ionic compounds or writing the formulas for ionic compounds. And the first thing that we need to know to be able to write the formulas is we gotta know their number of valence electrons. Okay, so when we look at the groups, remember we always said that group one has one valence electron, group two is two, 13, remember we take away that one, it's just three and then four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, the valence electrons, what they do is they help us determine the oxidation number. And oxidation number is just a fancy way of saying um, it tells us where the electrons are going and how many of them. Okay, So we know that, that metals are going to give up their, their electrons. So we know if they give up negatives, they're going to become more positive. So this is telling us when metals have a positive, which we have metals in group 1, group 2, group three, and we have some in group four, okay? The positive's telling us, hey, we're gonna give those electrons away, okay? And then what happens, metals are gonna give all they have. So metals are gonna have an oxidation number in group one of plus one, group two plus two, group three plus three, and group four plus four, okay? So basically it gives us a direction in how many, meaning the positive tells us where they're going, meaning they're giving up their electrons, and the number tells us how many. Now, we also have, on the other hand, we have nonmetals. Now, nonmetals are uh, takers. They take electrons, so they're going to be negative. So, group seven is negative, group six is negative, group five is negative, and then group four, we say it can be positive or negative, so we put a plus and minus there. Now, remember, our nonmetals are going to take until they have eight. Okay, so. In group 15, they already have five valence electrons, so they're going to go ahead and take three more to get eight. Group six, they already have, or group 16, they already have six, so they're going to take two more to get eight. And group 17, they already have seven, so they're going to take one to get eight. Okay, so these green numbers are going to be our oxidation numbers, and those help us in writing the ionic compounds because we know that in ionic compounds, they always um, we have the transfer of electrons. So let's start off with just a very um, simple ionic compound. Say we're bonding sodium. And let's go ahead and bond that to chlorine, Cl. Okay. So we write down their symbols, and then what we do is we write their oxidation numbers. Now, their oxidation number for sodium is plus 1. So we put plus 1. For chlorine, it's minus 1, minus 1. Okay, now you can see it written a couple different ways. You can see it written plus one, or you can just see it written without the one, meaning the one goes away and it's just a positive um, or a negative, depending on what you have. Okay, but they can go away, they can be there. So we'll say that for our purposes, we're going to say this is plus one and this is minus one. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and crisscross these meaning we take this number and just the number and we bring it down. Take this number and just that number and bring it down. Okay, now we're just bringing down the number. Okay, don't worry about the signs because in ionic compounds the positives always balance the negatives so you really don't need them uh, when you're writing the formulas. So what we do is we bring it down and we'll have Na. We brought down that one and it becomes a subscript and we have Cl and that became a one. Okay? And we don't need those ones, they're just understood, so we can just rewrite this as NaCl, and that would be our formula for sodium chloride. Okay, another example, say we have, we're bonding magnesium, and let's go ahead and bond that to chlorine. So we look on the periodic table and we see the oxidation number for Magnesium is going to be plus two. And chlorine is minus one from before. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and crisscross these to make our formula. Bring that one down, bring that two down, and we see we end up with Mg, bring down that one, and then Cl2. Okay, and remember we don't need that one, so we can just write this MgCl2, which that would be magnesium chloride. Okay, let's go on and move on to another one. Say here we're bonding magnesium. 
from before, and let's bond that to sulfur, which is just S. Okay? We know that magnesium is a plus two oxidation number, and we look at sulfur and we see that that is a negative two oxidation number. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and take these guys and crisscross them and bring them down and we will get um, a formula of Mg2s2. Now what we should recognize is that this is a 2 and that's a 2. Now ionic compounds form in the simplest whole ratio that we have. So basically what this means is we need to reduce here. And our final equation would just be MgS for magnesium sulfide. Okay, go ahead and we'll move on to another one. And on this one we'll say we have uh, calcium, Ca, bonding to phosphorus, which is just P. The oxidation numbers, calcium is plus 2, phosphorus is minus 3. And then we go ahead and take these guys and move them down. And we will see we will end up with Ca3P2. Okay, moving on. Now we're going to move on to talk about polyatomic ions. Now we said in class that polyatomic ions are a covalently group of atoms that are bonded together that have a charge, okay, meaning they're positive or negative. Uh, to break it down even farther into something that's simpler, say we we'll take uh, sulfate, which is SO4, and it has a negative two charge. What we see with sulfate and the way that you can spot a polyatomic is you gotta look for two capital letters. Okay, sulfur's capital, oxygen's capital, and uh, we see that it has a charge to it, a negative two charge. Okay, so we know that this is a polyatomic ion. And this guy's gonna act just like in crisscross, so writing the formula, it'll act just like a non-metal. So for example, say we're bonding uh, sodium, which is NA, Say we're bonding it to that sulfate, which is SO4. It has a negative two charge. And sodium, we know it's in group one, so it has a plus one charge. We go ahead and crisscross these guys, and what we see, see happens, we'll have our sodium, Na, and we brought down that two. And then what we should have for our polyatomics is we have a parentheses, SO4 parentheses, and that one's going to come down right outside here. Now we don't need that one, and that one can go away, but kind of leave it there in the beginning just so you get used to putting your polyatomics in um, parentheses. Okay? Because if we're dealing with another one, and we'll take sulfate as the same example, but say we're bonding it to aluminum. So we have aluminum, okay, which is right here, and then we have sulfate, which is SO4 the negative two charge okay and we go ahead and we see that aluminum is going to have a positive three charge and what we're going to have to do there is go ahead and crisscross these guys bring the numbers down and you see we're going to bring and we'll have aluminum and bring down that two and then we'll put a parentheses SO4 close the parentheses and bring that three down okay now it's very important that we have that parentheses there. We don't want to add the three to the four or anything like that because what this three is saying is that we have three of the sulfate polyatomic. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do another example and this time we're going to use another polyatomic. And this is ammonium, which is NH4 and it has a positive one charge to it. And we're going to bond these with a couple things. But one thing that's different about ammonium than sulfate that we saw previously is that ammonium has a positive, so it's going to act as a cation. Okay, so we're going to say that we're bonding ammonium, which is NH4 plus, and say we're going to go ahead and bond that to sulfur. Now I know sulfur's oxidation number is going to be uh, negative two, so we go ahead and take these guys and crisscross. Remember that positive is just positive one, and we're going to end up with parentheses, oh, that's bad parentheses, NH4, close parentheses, bring down that two, and sulfur, and we can put the one, but we really don't need it, okay?
Okay, so it's just NH4 with the two outside the parentheses bonded to sulfur. All right, moving on to the next one. Say we have ammonium, which is NH4, positive. And let's go ahead and bond that with, uh, let's go ahead and bond it with phosphorus, which is P. Now we know that phosphorus has a negative three oxidation number, it's right here. And we go ahead, remember that that's a one for ammonia, because if it's just a positive, it's positive one. If it's just a negative, it's negative one. Bring that down, crisscross them, and we see that we have parentheses, NH4, parentheses 3, P.